The pawns play such an important role in chess. Pawns, when working together, help us both attack and defend. The way the pawns are placed also help direct us like road signs. They tell us where to go and how to handle a position. We're going to look at three main types of positions. Open, closed, and semi-open positions. If there aren't a lot of pawns in the center, the position has open files and diagonals. They can be used like open roads for your pieces to travel all over the board. We call these types of positions open. In this position, notice that there are no pawns in the center, so there are a lot of open lines. Even though knights and bishops are generally considered to be worth about the same, in open positions, bishops are often far stronger than knights. The reason why is bishops are long-distance pieces that can travel from one side of the board to the other very quickly. Knights, on the other hand, are short-distance pieces, meaning knights take a longer time to travel across the board. In this position, both of white's bishops are pointing toward the kingside, White's light-squared bishop joins the queen on d3 in pointing at h7. With white to move, white can win at least a piece with bishop takes f6, removing the defender of h7 and threatening checkmate on the very next turn. Black must prevent checkmate with a move such as g6. Notice that black has weakened the dark squares around the king and has opened up the a1 to h8 diagonal. White now has the powerful move, bishop to b2, bringing the bishop to a safe square, and now that the dark squares have been opened around black's king, white's queen is ready to join the dark squared bishop on b2 to threaten checkmate. Let's take a look at the same position, except this time it's black to move. In open positions, bishops are generally far stronger than knights. With black to move, can you see how black can remove white's light-squared bishop in exchange for a knight? That's right, knight to b4. Black forks the queen and bishop. After the queen moves to safety, black will trade the knight for white's powerful light-squared bishop. Notice how the knight move also opens up black's light-squared bishop, joining the other bishop in pointing directly at the kingside. Since black will have a pair of bishops in an open position, black will have the better chances. In closed positions, the pawns are mostly fixed in place, blocking one another. There are little to no open lines to use, so the game becomes more positional, where pieces have to maneuver around to find good squares. Take a look at this position. It is a very closed game. Almost all of the pawns block each other, so it is very hard to open lines. Notice that the only open line is the b-file, which white's rook on b1 currently controls. In closed positions, knights can be very powerful because they can jump over pawns and other pieces. Bishops are usually not as strong because as we saw in the previous example, bishops love open diagonals. With white to move, can you find a way to trade black's knight for a bishop? That's right, with bishop to b5. White's bishop pins the knight to the queen preparing to enter a good knight versus a bad bishop endgame. If black's queen steps out of the way with queen to d8, white removes the knight with bishop takes d7. After queen takes d7, white plays the strong move, knight to c4. White threatens to fork the queen and rook on a8 with knight to b6. Notice the knight also pressures black's weak pawns on d6 and a5. White's knight is very well placed. Notice how black's bishop is passively blocked behind its own pawns. Let's say that black plays rook to a6, preventing the knight fork and still protecting the weak a5 pawn. White will build more pressure on a5 by playing rook to b5, threatening to win the a5 pawn on the next turn. Black plays queen to c7, protecting the pawn and also preparing rook to b8 to fight for the open b-file. Can you find white's next move that completely controls the b-file and brings another piece to the queen side? That's right, rook f to b1. White completely dominates the b-file. White is ready to play rook b7 on the next turn, invading black's territory. 
Black's passive pieces are no match for White's active forces. The third type of position is semi-open, which is somewhere in the middle of an open and closed game. In this position, there is only one file open, so this position looks mostly closed. Notice the tension between White's pawn on d4 and Black's pawn on c5. With Black to move, Black can decide to make the position a more open game with c takes d4, opening up at least part of the c file for Black's rook to enjoy. If White plays c takes d4, Black can play rook to c7, preparing to double the rooks on the newly opened c file and complete development with rook f to c8 on the next move. After c takes d4, if White decides to play knight takes d4, trying to keep the c file closed, notice that White no longer has a pawn on d4, controlling e5 and c5. Black can now activate the knight with knight to c5, attacking White's light squared bishop and fighting for control of the center. Instead of opening up the position, Black can decide to keep the position mostly closed with c4, attacking White's bishop on d3 and blocking the c-file. This type of position will see a lot of piece maneuvering, with both sides trying to find good squares for their pieces and looking for weaknesses to attack. Finally, Black can also keep things unclear by playing rook f to e8, fighting for the only open file and keeping options available to open or close the position later. In semi-open positions, you have to stay flexible and be prepared for files to open or close, ready for both tactics if the position opens up and positional maneuvering if the position closes. Now that you've learned the differences between open, closed, and semi-open positions, it's your turn to make decisions in these types of positions.